Hey Cats Head, Midsoul Bud here. Today I have a new episode for you of Running Shoe Yay or Nay. This is a series where I delve into some forthcoming running shoes set to be released in 2024 and let you know if I'm going to pick up a pair of them for review or not. It's not me saying the shoe is trash or treasure. I can't know that until I truly get the shoe in hand. It could be that another shoe tuber can simply do the shoes more justice than I. Or there might be a particular pair that are going to fit really well into my shoe rotation. Okay. Hey, made that very clear. Let's get to it. Thanks for joining me on the channel. It is always appreciated. Do support the channel if you can on a more ad hoc basis by giving us a super thanks or perhaps even joining us a member. Do though ensure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. You know it makes sense. Danke schön. I got four shoes to check out for you today. Let's get into it with shoe number one. We kick off today's episode with a new model from Hoka. This is the Celo X1. So we're kind of putting together loads of different Hoka shoe models here. The Celo Road, which was that sort of very low stack responsive shoe. There was a Mac X as well, which was a sort of middle ground, I guess, between a more daily use shoe and perhaps a slight stability nod. Throwing all that together in with a bit of the Rocket X formula as well. Perhaps we have something that's along the lines of a Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro Hoka. A real overblown stack there and loads of the midsole foam cut out. Perhaps Hoka going for some significant weight reduction here on this model. Though when you inspect the midsole a little bit further, it does appear the foam creeps up around the back of the foot a little. So it's not all underneath the foot in the base. There does also seem to be a similar thing going on there in the lateral side of the toe box as well. I think this is still going to be a race legal shoe with the sample size at 40 millimeters. And I expect some similar bounce to what we found in the Rocket X2 with all that cut out material from the heel. Quite cool to see the split midsole returning here in shoes like the Puma Fast R and the Tempo Next Percent. Reports on this one are that it is that same foam that they've utilized within the Rocket X2. It's very squashy, very compressive and soft. So this one could be a mega light but cushioned option there's a serious heel bevel there, which is why I mentioned the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Very similar in design. Of course, Hoka were always into the rocker designs, though the lateral side of the heel in this case seems to be raised up quite a bit like the Adidas models that we've seen of recent years. At $300 though, which is the reported price of this new model, it's going to have to really hit the spot in the upper department. And some Hoka shoes over the last few years for me have been a bit of a letdown in that area. I think I need more info on the Celo X1 before I spam out 300 Earth credits. So for the time being at least, it's a nay for me on this quite interesting looking beast. Shoe 2. Upcoming for the trail enthusiast, the second version of Nike's Zagama shoe. Hopefully this one will feel a little bit more like it's got Zoom X in the midsole because the first version was just sorely lacking in that department. We again have the CR02 carrier foam around that very soft Zoom X material. Though I did feel that the last version, the combination of the foams there just nullified any of the nice feelings that we experienced in a similar design shoe, the Vomero 16. All indications here are the last used for the new version of the Zagami is going to be somewhat altered to accommodate the foot a little bit more for those longer distance events. Let's not forget this is very much an ultra aimed shoe so if you're going to be running loads and loads of miles perhaps at a slightly slower speed maybe the Zagama 2 could be right up your street or your mountain. At least this time around the swoosh have teamed up with Vibram to offer a much better outsole design. We have the Mega Grip rubber here. The last version of the shoe really wasn't great in terms of traction. I did sell that shoe on in the end. I just had no need for it whatsoever. It wasn't a very exciting shoe to run in. The weight is reported to be around 320 grams for a US men's 10. They reckon that there's 36 millimeters of heel stack in the sample size. I certainly had over 40 in the original version of the shoe. But with that type of weight, it's going to be a very hefty shoe in my size. I think if you go to Tim Gross's size, it's just going to be a brick. It's what people always say, oh, well, you know, bigger people, they're going to be able to deal with the shoe weight a bit more. I'm 
quite a thin guy, you know, and if I put a brick shoe on, such as the Zigama original, it just isn't inspiring in the slightest. I think there were a niche band of people out there that really liked the Zagama and it worked for them and that's great, but that shoe certainly wasn't for me, it's for a very specific runner. So it's going to stay off my radar, there's a load of other shoe tubers that will do this one way more justice than I will. The colorways, pretty dreadful I have to say, it's almost like they've used a pin the tail on the donkey type thing here, maybe a random colour picker in the Nike lab. Who comes up with some of this stuff? Anyway, onwards and upwards, it's a nay on the Zigama 2 from Nike. Lots of other people will get a lot more out of that shoe than I will. Shoe 3. Next up, we're talking about the Pegasus 41. The Nike Pegasus, always a very popular model, and I get a lot of questions and requests for reviews on it. Looks like we have some changed up foam this time around, so it's quite a different design from the last one. Big talking point here is that the new Nike foam, the latest iteration of this shoe, will be React X. So that means two things, really. Nike are making some attempts to update the shoe and bring it into 2024. The React foam we had in the previous ones was long-lasting, but somewhat uninspiring and a little bit firm for some people. Though I do think with the React X being a little bit lighter that we're going to get more stack in the Pegasus 41 over the 40. The days really are gone of daily options with around 24 millimeters of heel stack in the sample size. I reckon Nike are going to increase the heel stack by maybe even about four millimeters this time around. I think that'll bring the Pegasus more in line with models like Puma's Velocity Nitro 3 or even Saucony's Ride 17. React X does appear to be a touch lighter and of course there's not always that much to the Pegasus upper. So I'll be very keen to see just how much nimbler it makes this version of Nike's daily do-it-all shoe. The reports are that there is still a forefoot and heel air section in the midsole of the shoe. I think that will mean that the shoe will last the test of time and it won't bottom out quite so badly as some foam-only midsole shoes. Everything points to an April 2024 release on the Pegasus 41. It's such a popular model, I get inundated with questions on these. Even now, I keep getting questions on the Pegasus 40. It's one of the most watched videos from last year. I think there's enough changes here in the Pegasus 41 to make it a sort of worthy review. I think it's worth documenting and people will be interested in it. So I'm gonna say it's a yay this time around. It's just enough changes there to warrant it. One little worry there is that huge amount of foam spilling out the end of the midsole there and the heel. Not sure why Nike is so obsessed with doing that all the time. Doesn't seem to give any real advantage to any of their models whatsoever. I mean, nobody lands like that, do they, on their heel? I suggest if you did that too often, you'd probably end up in hospital. Okay, shoe four, last one up for today. Soon to be released, in fact, on the 1st of February here in the UK is the New Balance Fuel Cell SE Elite version 4. Lots of viewers have been asking me if I'm going to check this one out. Let's delve deeper. Something puts me off this one straight away. New Balance are asking 260 quid for this shoe. And it's clocking in at 237 grams or 8.4 ounces in the sample size. Now, the Vaporfly 3 in my size is that weight. So that makes this one one of the more hefty super shoes that we're going to see in 2024. You can always add on maybe another like 25 grams or so. So yeah, it's going to make this one that little bit more hefty on foot. And when you consider that this is a high-end race offering, it just seems a bit odd. There's lots of peeba based foam in the midsole of the SC Elite version 4. But I think if you're going to price it like this, very aggressively, 25 quid less than the Alpha Fly 3. Yeah, you've got to be pretty sure of yourself. I mean, you can pick up discounted pairs of the Vaporfly 3 for way less than this, so it's a hard sell. There's quite a significant rocker here in the forefoot area of the Elite 4. Lots of foam back in the rear of the shoe, which protrudes again clear past that footbed. The upper here, though, has some additional eyelets than we've seen on previous versions of the SC Elite. I think that's no doubt going to welcome some fans who found it difficult to get a good lockdown in the previous version of the shoe. New Balance seems to do this in quite a number of their models over the last few years. I remember finding it quite hard to dial in the 1080 v11 i think it was just not enough eyelets towards the toe box end of the shoe we have that midsole carving to minimize some weight and a new outsole pattern which wasn't the best on previous versions the v1 though was absolutely fantastic the midsole may be the softest known to man woman or beast but we have loads of contenders like that right now 
and they don't cost 260 quid. Not sure why they seem to carry such a premium at the moment. New Balance models are just really expensive. The SC Pacer, for example, 1080 v13 i think if i'm going to test out anything from new balance this year i'll probably be more keen to look at the sc pacer v2 or even the additional stack on the rebel v4 that one looks really exciting this one's just not speaking to me really apart from the cyberpunk style looks so it's a nay on the SE Elite version 4 from New Balance. It's just too costly a gamble with lower stack super shoes like the Takumi Sen 10 working way better for me right now. Looking at the types of training that I'm doing as well, I'm just not sure if I need all that stack. Suddenly those discounted pairs of the Alpha Fly 2 seem really good value. Okay, that's all four shoes in today's yay or nay. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these models down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. I've been listening to a beautiful song by McCalmonton Butler, which is called Blue. This was released on their 2002 album, Bring It Back. I think I really love this song due to the fact it's been so grey and gloomy recently here in the UK. There's been very little blue sky up there. We've had a period of really cold weather here. It's made training quite hard. I've been going out for some shorter sessions just trying to get a few miles under my belt where I can. Some beautiful acoustic guitar playing on this track and a fantastic vocal performance from David McCalmont. Sounds very intimate, I suppose. He sounds like he could be right in front of you. Not too many effects on his voice. The production nice and simple. Just the key component parts there make for an absolutely beautiful, very heartwarming song, I suppose. David McCalmont's sort of talking about how he wants all the browns and greys to disappear and the light to come back. It's going to like lift everybody in the city. I think that's very much how people feel right now. Fantastic song, Blue, by McCalmont and Butler. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. It really does help out. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.